The fourth season of The Division 2 ended in a sizzle. It was the conclusion to not only the second year of content, but to the game as a whole. The failure of The Division 2's live service model and the lack of transparency from Massive Entertainment and Ubisoft shows a complete lack of respect to their players. This video is divided into two chapters. In the first chapter I will rant about and discuss the failure of the live service model in The Division 2 and the lack of transparency from Massive and Ubisoft. In the second chapter I'm talking about the content and games I want to upload in 2021 and 2022. I will accompany it with a community poll so you get a say in what I will be uploading the coming years. Before continuing the video, as an added way to increase my income on YouTube, I have joined affiliate programs of companies and products that I support. The affiliate links can be found in the description. You can support me by using the supporter creator code MastermindsHD in the Epic Games Store and by clicking on or buying games and other products through the Kingwin and Amazon links. On top of that, I link to each of the products I use in my setup as a content creator, so if you're considering using these products, you can support me by following the link. I will only recommend products and services I use myself. Thanks for your support and enjoy the video. On February 9th, 2021, Season 4 and of Watch, the Year 2 content and the Division 2 as a whole came to a conclusion. An ending to the narrative from the past 5-6 to six years. Three days later, the development team of the Division posted a message. We see the ongoing conversation in our community and we understand that you are eager for news of what lies ahead for the Division 2. Today, we are thrilled to confirm that there will be additional content for the Division 2 released later this year. It is your continuous passion and support which enables us to continue to build upon the Division 2 experience and we cannot thank you enough for that. Some of you had noticed that Title Update 12 was originally meant to be the last major Title Update for the Division 2, but thanks to your continued support we are now in the early stages of development for fresh content to release later in 2021. While it's still too early to go into more details today, you won't have to wait too long as we will share more as soon as we can. In the meantime, we again want to send a heartfelt thank you for your continued support throughout the Division 2 post-launch period. You cannot stress enough how much this means to us. Until next time, the Division 2 development team. This lack of a satisfying conclusion to the story, accompanied by this post, went down completely the wrong pipe with the players. And that's completely understandable. But before ranting about the failure of the Division 2's live service model and the developers or publishers lack of transparency, let's take a trip down memory lane. The development of the Division franchise was spearheaded by Massive Entertainment with the assistance from Red Storm Entertainment and several Ubisoft studios. Both games of the franchise were viewed excellently, with a meta score of 79 and 84 respectively. Yet there was a disparity between the reviews and how the players experienced the games. Both games user score was significantly lower with a user score of 60 and 46 respectively. This disparity between the meta and user scores visualizes perfectly what is not only wrong with the Division franchise, but with the video games industry as a whole. Over the past decade, the video games industry has become the most popular form of entertainment. Its revenue has grown from $25.1 billion in 2010 to almost $180 billion in 2020, outcompeting the global movie and North American sports industries combined. This growth in revenue inspired a gold rush, but instead of miners and merchants, it attracted corporations and investors. As you could imagine, these businessmen didn't have the best interest of the gamer at heart. As a result, pre-orders, microtransactions, loot boxes, manipulative marketing campaigns, unfinished games at release followed by a live service model trying to keep the gamer hooked just enough so they would keep playing. Ubisoft, one of the four largest publishers in the video games industry, made this business model their own and used it to create what we know of today as the open world game. Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, Watch Dogs, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon and the reason we're here to talk about, The Division. Franchises once held in high regard but now are only a shell of their former self. Let's take a step back. It's June 11, 2013. You come home after a long day of school, retreat to your man cave, put on your sweatpants and tune into E3 2013. A cinematic trailer and gameplay trailer immerses you into a post-apocalyptic world that will one day become your reality. You just didn't know it yet. In all your youthful innocence, your view of the gaming industry hasn't been spoiled yet and you are hyped. 
You continue watching. The camera slowly pans down, revealing a snow-covered New York City, rendering the finest details. It shows an interactable environment, making you feel as if you're part of that world. It almost looks too good to be true. And if we have learned one thing in the eight years since, when it looks too good to be true, that's because it is. Fast forward to March 13, 2016. You've bought the game, preloaded it and are ready to play. With three of your friends, you launch the game, expecting an era-defining gaming experience. But instead, you're greeted with downgraded graphics, an environment not even half as detailed as shown at E3 and animations completely scrapped from the game. You have been the victim of Ubisoft and its manipulative marketing campaign. Three years later, its sequel was released, The Division 2. You told yourself this time you knew better, but you didn't. Hopeful as you were six years before, you pre-ordered the game. Not because you thought the game would be an era-defining experience, but because at a surface level you enjoyed the first game just enough to justify playing the sequel. Massive took note of the feedback of The Division and improved upon it. You and every other gamer playing the game loved the journey towards the end game. Objectively, it was a good game, but subjectively, you felt there was something wrong again. Was it the loot drop rarity, or perhaps the bullet sponginess of the enemies? No, it was something else. The Division 2 is described as an action, roleplay and tactical shooter. At its core, the game is about roleplay and loot. You play the missions to earn loot. You use the loot to improve the build of your character to subsequently play missions and earn better loot. The repetitiveness of this cycle, an issue at the core of each roleplaying game, directly caused the decline of the Division 2's player base. Neither Ubisoft or Massive would acknowledge this, but the players felt it. Matchmaking took longer. The clan quarter seemed a little bit empty. But there was one feature that could pose a possible solution to such an existential problem. The narrative. The story is often an underappreciated feature in role-playing games and frequently overshadowed by role-play elements. Massive knew this and would combat this decline with one feature, life surface. The concept of life surface is inherently a good one. Life surface aims to attract players and keep them interested. This is in favor of both the players and the developers of the game. However, a concept is only half the work. The other half comes down to execution. Massive provided live service in its year 1 and year 2 content. The first year of content introduced three episodes of narrative content and would progress the story in such a way that it would answer important questions. Questions such as, who is the shadowy organization funding Black Dust? Who are the hunters? What happened to the rest of the world after the outbreak? Questions fundamental to the immersion of the game. Every three months an episode would release and every time players were disappointed. Three months of waiting for two main missions with one to two hours of gameplay if you stretched it out. Surprisingly, it raised more questions about the story than it answered. Players questioned what Massive had been up to all the time. It couldn't have been this lackluster content. The players were right. Not long after the third episode was released, Massive announced an expansion, Warlords of New York. This expansion, besides an insane amount of gameplay content, would add a continuation to the narrative in a new location, Lower Manhattan. Admittedly, this expansion was great, but it was too late for many of the players that already left the game. The second year of content continued the story of Warlords of New York. It introduced a new format, Seasons. Massive presented this recycled drip feed content as if it was a proper expansion on the game. Each season would introduce new and returning characters, with each one ending up eliminated in a bounty or a replayed main mission, never to be heard of again. This felt like an absolute insult to the players. The players' outrage reached its peak during the fourth season, End of Watch. The main antagonist, Fei Lao, a friend from the start of the outbreak turned traitor, was defeated in a recycled main mission. It wasn't a unique mission, nor was there even a cutscene for the most important character in the game. The voice lines were often uninspired, were literally recycled from earlier used cutscenes and collectibles. And this lack of a satisfying conclusion to the story showed a complete lack of respect towards the players and angered the few that were still playing. The lack of content can be explained. Massive started development on two AAA gaming franchises, Project Avatar and Project Star Wars. Massive would have their hands full with even one of these projects, let alone three. Anyone can understand Massive didn't expect to have to develop three major titles, but the lack of transparency from either Ubisoft or Massive shows an utter lack of respect towards its players and I think that's just unacceptable. Even worse, rather than halting the development on The Division 2, Massive is continuing creating a third year of content with what I can only imagine is a skeleton crew. In my opinion, the game should have been taken off of live support long ago. 
Based on their performance, I'm not holding my breath, but I will keep an eye on the third year of content for you guys. This hypothetical conclusion of the Division 2 creates an opportunity for me to look at the content I want to create in 2021 and 2022. The past few weeks I have been brainstorming on the direction of the channel and I came up with three concepts. Option number one, select one or two games and create in-depth lore and tutorial content similar to what I've been doing with the Division 2. Option number two, select a variety of games and just create lore content. And option number three, create overarching topical videos on video games. I added a link in the description to the poll where you can vote on the direction you'd like me to go. This first option is similar to how I've been creating content until now, but rather than uploading the Division 2 content, I will be uploading most likely Outriders and the day before content in 2021 and Project Avatar and Star Wars content in 2022. The second option sees less in-depth content but adds more games such as the ones I mentioned and Lord of the Rings Gollum, Horizon Forbidden West, God of War Ragnarok and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. The third option means I will upload video game commentaries over gameplay on topics such as why more people are leaving their jobs to play video games or how video games help against depression. In this format it would kind of look like this video. If my busy schedule allows it, I will combine the three directions, but if it doesn't, my preference is the first option, to select one or two games and create in-depth lore and tutorial content. Although it might not be such a happy ending for the franchise we love, I'm grateful for what it brought me. It's great to have built a community around the game and I don't regret a second of it. And I'm interested in what you, as a fellow player of the Division franchise, think about all of this. I want to thank you greatly for watching. You tuning in and giving me your attention feels amazing and is very much appreciated. If you enjoy the content I create and want to support me, there are several things you can do. Liking or disliking, depending on what you thought of the video. Other than views, this shows me how much you like the content I upload. Subscribing shows not only your support, but also that you want to watch more videos. Leaving a comment, whether it's about the game or the video itself, is always exciting for me. And one of the best ways to support me is to join the channel and become a member for one, five or ten dollars. Other than badges and emojis and a thank you at the end of every video, members will have early access to uploads of the large projects such as short films and large lore videos. Tier 2 members like Monty Lambert or members like Khalil Cheeks, Nervous Wreck, Sparky22, Carson Block, Sal Martinez and Jack Bonny. The last way, as I mentioned at the start of the video, you can support me by using affiliate links and creator codes mentioned in the description. I'm invested in growing this channel to serve as a part-time or even a full-time job. To me that would mean I could support my girlfriend and a future family and for you it means more frequent higher quality content and an even larger community. Nonetheless I will keep creating content because that's what I like to do. Thanks again for watching, peace out.